Hi guys, Mook <laughs> Dick. Today I'm going to be running through my favourite builds to troll, meme or just generally be annoying with. If you were looking for some more serious builds, check out my previous video in the description. And as always, if you'd like to see more content from me, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below of what you'd like to see next. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Despite what everyone says, ranged builds are actually fun. Throwy builds are even more fun. And the cold hard truth is that all the builds in this video are actually viable to play with and you can still get a decent amount of kills. Especially on those brave souls who don't wear sufficient head protection. You guys, please keep doing what you do. To be clear, this isn't a video about bows or archery. Before I was good enough to hold my own in melee, I spent my first 400 hours or so throwing everything in the kitchen sink at anything that moved. Not only did this turn my meager throwables into heat seekers, but it also weirdly taught me how to be good at regular combat with a variety of weapons due to needing to scavenge when you run out, slip movement in order to resupply, and also that if you're far back enough, even the sweats can't do anything about it. Seriously, if there's a player you can't kill, activate sneak mode and try one of these builds. As a side note, I think these builds work best in the Mimia Brawl modes of Deathmatch, but it can be fun to try in big team battles. Get your emote and voice line skill up, as what I'll show you today is made infinitely better with a bit of character banter. Keep in mind, you'll probably end up being targeted while using any of these, so like always, you will die a lot, and most of these are glass cannon builds, but it's worth it, and the better you get, the easier it is to... Retreat! Number 5. Ducky. For our first build of the video, we have Ducky, a 1-1-1 build equipped with three rocks to pelt to everyone who looks at you funny. This one isn't actually truly viable as a playstyle to do well, but it's kind of cute while also being incredibly annoying to the player on the other end. To achieve the look, select Tight Hood with Plague Doctor Mask and Rider's Hosen for those chickeny legs. You could take better torso armor as you'll have a ton of points left over, but better to go light for speed and color options. Make sure you take the Dwarf perk and I'd also recommend Mule and Scavenger. Last thing you want to do is choose the highest pitch French voice and run around like a madman showing off your rock to people before hurling them in every direction. When you run out, press XX5 to yield a moat, C3 to help and run around like a chicken until you become like a headless one. You may even meet some fellow rocking joys along the way. You'll also probably die a lot, but at least you'll be satisfied in knowing you rocked everyone's world. Number 4. Trip Jav Combo. I personally play this merc with armor of 000 or 111. This works in a similar vein to the previous build, but instead of rocks, take three javelins. I'd recommend taking the supplied perk to reduce supply cooldown, bloodlust to sometimes deal a finishing blow, and also using eastern voice for extra Sorry, my mistake. as you hit them for the 30th time that game. Other than that, you can modify them with whatever points you have left over after selecting the weapons. This build pretty much works the same as the last and relies on your speed to throw and then slip away, usually by looking down or leaning away as you run from your opponent to throw again. While running away, cue the attack and then snap turn to drill it to them before they can parry. Kicks can also be useful to stagger before you throw. If you feel like you need more protection, you can sacrifice one of your jabs for a shield to gain the ability to block and you can also throw that too. You get the picture. Number 3. The Devil. For this sneaky build, make yourself look like a little devil using a padded coif, coif, I don't know how you say it, and a jester's mask with either 111 armor or 110. Choose the cruel voice to maximize devilishness and then load yourself up with a partisan, two bear traps, supplied, mule, dwarf, and rat perk for extra sneak bonus. You play this merc by either luring or baiting lost souls into the clutches of your bear traps and then using the partisan to send them back to the depths of hell extra points for laughing while you do it. You can place four traps at once if you resupply, and of course you can even throw the trident at the ones that slip away. Placement is up to you, but there are a few maps where this build works better, as you can hide them in the floor or the areas are just more constrained, like Dungeon or Fatoria. Although your intention is to be sneaky, I sometimes find lulling players into a false sense of comfort with your devilishly charming emotes, only to turn on them later, also works quite well. Alternatively, just hide and wait for your prey to come to you. Number 2. Spearow Copy At number 2 we have a clone of Spearow from my previous video, but instead of the short spears, this version of the 220 Merc has a buckler and two sets of throwing knives. Make sure you also take Supplied to reduce ammo cooldown, Mule, and Scavenger perks. Can you tell I like these perks yet? 
This could potentially be one of the most annoying builds in the whole game, but does require some skill as you ideally want to hit their head and you also need to be able to read your opponents quite well because they will try to faint you when they realise what's going on. Even if you aren't that good at reading yet, it's still worth trying out anyway as it's a good class to condition you to watching your opponent and not focusing on your own swings. All builds in this guide can be played in either first or third person, but this one you should probably play in first. Other than that, it's a pretty simple class to use, throw the knives and block with the shield. When they come close to hug you, throw a couple of kicks to knock them back and do some extra damage without wasting any ammo. Ideally, when you join a game, or die, the first thing you want to do is make your way to an ammo box, put the buckler away, drop one set of throwing knives on the floor, use the ammo box to resupply and then pick up the ones you dropped, making sure to re-equip the buckler. Boy, that was a lot. This is where the mule perk comes in handy, as now you have three sets instead of two, which helps mitigate any misses or if you're up against a big boy and need the extra gear. If you don't manage to make it to the crate, the mule and scavenger perks lets you grab an enemy's weapon for the dreaded moment you run out of knives. And it really is a terrible moment, as for some reason the game forces you to put your shield away when you do, so use them sparingly. I'd also say try to take fights one on one if you're not just throwing at everyone or you'll lose those knives even quicker. If you find a willing participant, you can even 1v1 against the same build, but due to the parry timing with the buckler, it makes it quite hard to do so. My final tip for this build is that after throwing a couple, if you can get in close, you can auto pick up some of your ammo off your opponent to keep the train going. Also, always walk over the bodies when they die to recoup any ammo you lost while you wait to resupply. Number 1. Hypnosis Before I go through this build, let me tell you a little story about a player called Hypnosis. When I first started playing Mordhau, I exclusively played Deathmatch, and every so often I'd see this little blonde dwarf in pink shorts who would never speak in chat but had such a distinct body language while savaging the lobby with his crossbow and throwing axes. He was such a pest but in a way that was really fun to play against, and as I was a noob I considered him like a little mini boss that would haunt lobbies from time to time. I wish I had proper clips or could truly explain, but there was just something I found hysterical about the way his merc was played. Honestly, this dude kept me playing the game and made me realise that you can play however you want, sparking my love of the throw. So, Hypnosis, wherever you are these days, my favourite and most played build is inspired by you. Okay, Maud Simp over. This is a modified build of that player's iconic loadout utilising a 0-1-1 armour with a crossbow and two throwing axes. Recommended perks like most build in this video include Supplied, Mule and Dwarf. The rest are up to you. I'd be lying if I said that this build doesn't take up most of my no life at amount of hours in this game. It's 100% viable to win matches using and you can get seriously good with throwing axes when you get the muscle memory down. If you ever see me on EU Brawl, this is probably what I'll be using. Consider the crossbow to be more like a sidearm with the throwing axes as the main event. When you're in a lobby, use the crossbow as soon as you respawn and unless you have the time, don't even bother reloading and just go ham aiming the axes towards every head you see. Most of my games consist of setting a personal challenge to get the perfect set, which is a kill with only one shot from each weapon without wastage. Alternatively, play it however you want. As with the other builds, it's all about being sneaky and slippy, ducking and dodging with quick snaps to hit heads. When you run out, either walk over bodies to pick up loose axes, resupply or use the scav mule combo to grab a weapon for the tight situations where you need to block. Throwing axes are best played by aiming slightly over their head and letting it arc down, but you'll get a feel for it the more you play. I hope this video provided you with some inspiration to bring some silly fun into the game. If you like this video, please click that like and subscribe button and leave a comment on what you'd like to see next. I really appreciate all of you that have enjoyed my content so far, and as always, keep looking them dudes.